Matzo ball soup, one of my top five favorite foods. It was, I mean, I think even before I had a bottle in my mouth, I was sipping on matzo ball soup. And there's no better time of year to be having it than now as the Passover season is upon us. Although I make this soup at least once a month and there's nothing better than that essential Jewish penicillin, a great chicken soup, and no better dumpling to have with it than a classic matzo ball. First thing we wanna do is make our matzo balls so I want to whip my egg whites. I'm going to add a pinch of cream of tartar that's going to help stabilize our egg whites. One of the things about matzo balls is there are two different types. There are heavy, dense sinkers, and then there are floaters. I happen to be a floater guy. And to make good floaters, you got to get air into those balls. And the best way to do that is separate some of my eggs and make some beaten egg whites to fold into our mixture. It's starting to hold some soft peaks. It just refers to the stiffness of the beaten egg whites. We have a nice, stiff egg white. And you see that right there? That'd be a stiff peak. So we're just going to set those aside. Into our bowl here, we have our garlic and onion powders, baking soda, baking powder, some salt, my egg yolks, some whole egg. A little bit of pepper. I'm gonna combine those elements. I have my schmaltz, rendered chicken fat minced onion, our egg white, and our matzo meal. And I'm just gonna gently fold this together. The matzo meal is gonna absorb all of those liquids. Cut a piece of saran, take it and push it down onto the mixture itself. All you wanna do is prevent a dry skin from forming on top of your matzo meal. There we go, it's gonna take about a half hour, 45 minutes for the matzo meal to absorb all the liquid. You can store it even up to 24 hours and you're not gonna see any problem with it whatsoever. So you can do this the day in advance if you like. I have some chicken broth right here, but I wanna make really, really strong chicken soup. I'm actually going to poach my whole chicken. We're just gonna place this into our hot broth. When it reaches a boil, we're gonna turn it down to maintain a simmer, cover it, and let it cook for an hour, hour and 10 minutes until that chicken is done. Oh, that's beautiful. I think we're done here. Nice wide spoon into the cavity of the bird. Don't worry about quarters or wings falling off. Super easy to pick those up, put them into our bowl, let that cool. Here we have our broth for our chicken soup. I'm gonna add my onion, carrot and celery, rutabaga, lends a really nutty sweetness to this. It's a great vegetable. Next thing that we wanna do, our chicken meat. Now, usually when I'm making chicken soup, I'll just peel away pieces of the chicken and just drop those back in there to cook for the final half an hour with our dumplings and with our veg. Add a couple sprigs of parsley and a few sprigs of dill. So now we have the meat from half a chicken, all those vegetables, the double chicken stock that's now a really rich chicken broth. We have our matzah batter here. I have some vegetable oil for my hands because this stuff can be sticky. And all I'm going to do is gently roll some small matzo balls because they're going to expand almost double in size. We'll come back to that in 20, 25 minutes, and those should be done. Told you those would double in size. Shallow bowl, New York Jewish deli style. I'm kind of a two ball person. A little bit of dill on there. Take a little bit of leftover parsley. Show you what this presentation can look like. Sometimes nice in a larger, deeper bowl. Let me show you something else. Look at how perfect those are, how light they are, that air that's still in there, which is why they float, and quite frankly, is why you can just eat. Mm. 400 of these.